اهلا بكم مجددا بحسب المعهد العربي الامريكي يعيش اكثر من ثلاثة ملايين ونصف المليون امريكي من اصل عربي في الولايات المتحدة ونكمل عددنا مع الان زغيب الرسامة الامريكية اللبنانية الاصل 1000 هي الوسيلة الأبرز التي تساعدنا على تشجيع الحوار الثقافي بين الشرق الأوسط والولايات المتحدة هذا ما تؤمن به الفنانة اللبنانية الأمريكية إيلان صغيب وتعكسه في لوحاتها In 1975 in left to Athens where we were evacuated to he promised we we would be back in one week and 35 years later i finally went back for the first time with my father and my mother and my husband but because i i grew up overseas i feel like all those influences are inside of me and it, my work lends itself to that. Uh, the paint that I use, the detail, the sort of mosaic, strong colors, design, that's, that's sort of who I am and what I know. تحاول ألان أن تظهر مواضيعها من خلال مزيج من الألوان والنقوش. So that's how I work. It's gouache, opaque watercolor, and I can control it very well. Um, I mix my own colors and I sketch it out very roughly. Then I, I use ink and a hard edge and then I, I just paint. Uh, the painting is really like icing on the cake for me. It just comes out of somewhere inside of me. Um, the composition is very important. And the patterns are, you know, taken from, inspired from, um, you know, embroidery. Palestinian embroidery, Arab embroidery. تعلق الان بجذورها الشرق اوسطيه واضح خاصه في سلسله من اللوحات تحمل اسم قصص اخبرني اياها والدي تروي طفوله والدها في لبنان. We were sitting around having dinner and typical to my father he began telling stories about Teta and the family and here and so on and so forth. And the next day, I got a phone call from a gallery to say they wanted to do an exhibit with me. So I, I said, what about these stories? I, my father, I would love to paint my father's stories. So he ended up writing the stories. Those are his own words. And I painted, I painted his stories for him. And we have 22 of them. This piece is called Coming to America. And this is one of the pieces that is at the National Arab American Museum in um, Michigan. And this is the story when he comes on the, um, and the ship went around to Jordan and Palestine and Syria and Lebanon and picked up people and brought them to America. And so this is where my father is sailing into um, the harbor in New York. One of my first major exhibits was at the Bronx Museum of the Arts in New York City. And um, I, it was on the idea of marginalization of minority communities. And so what they accepted into the exhibit were my three monuments that I had done, George Washington, Lincoln, and the Capitol Monument, which when I first came to Washington, I looked at those monuments, they're right I'm in the neighborhood of them. I saw them all the time and I thought they're really white. <laughs> and I also thought that I wanted to put my own impression on them and feel that everyone who comes to this country as uh, an immigrant or a non-American should appreciate wh what, what these monuments and what this country truly stands for. The painting that President Obama and the White House and State Department Office of Protocol selected for Prime Minister Maliki upon his visit to the White House was a piece I did called Midnight Prayers. Large piece, very detailed, and what it depicts or what I wanted to get across in that piece is 
optimism and, and uh, tranquility for the Middle East, hopefulness for the future. And after that, through the same State Department Office of Protocol, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton selected my George Washington Monument to give as the gift from State Department to the King of Morocco. This piece is a smaller version. Um, this is called Reconciliation. And this is a piece that Saad Hariri, um, at the time Prime Minister, gave to George Bush at the White House as a gift from Lebanon. This is in Martyr Square. It is representing the church and the mosque living side by side. في سلسلة أطلقت عليها اسم عباية مزجت إلان من الشرق والغرب فهي رسمت نساء محجبات بأسلوب كليمت مونغيان وبيكاسو So I mixed um, western influences with the Abaya and created a sort of sense of humor but changed the perception of what the Abaya is, what it represents. I'm not indicating by the veil that they're restricted or inhibited in any way or oppressed. Um, to the contrary, actually, a lot of times I have a lot of beautiful colors and patterns on them um, that makes them absolutely come alive. So it's a vehicle for me as opposed to anything really beyond that. The painting is called Abaya Driving. And it, after I heard a report on NPR, um, I felt compelled to do that, that painting. So she sort of has this look on her face like she's escaping. <laughs> she's escaping and driving. It was funny because I live right across from the Saudi Embassy and they would have demonstrations. <laughs> They'd take my painting and hold it out there on the balcony to them <laughs> in solidarity with the women. I'm influenced by everything, by people, by stories, by monuments, by words. I began doing um, several pieces on the Arab Spring, um, also going at it from a different angle for hopefulness and optimism that will result, inshallah. I did um, a woman who's the background of her and she's covered with flowers and in the landscape of the Middle East which is beautiful and chaotic at the same time. غالبا ما تستلهم ألم من الأحداث السياسية ولكن مواقفها دائما دبلوماسية. Events happen like 9-11 and the Arab Spring um, that your work revolves around those because you're addressing those issues which are inherently problematic and, and uh, have different opposing sides and so on and so forth. So my, my way is always to try and come up with some way, a beautiful way, to look at that issue uh, without hitting somebody over the head and telling them how they should think. I, I want them to sort of look at the painting and, and feel what they want to feel through that painting. Um, and, and have that painting be also beautiful, but also tell its story. لتعرف أكثر على المبدعين العرب في الولايات المتحدة تابعونا على صفحة المجلة شو على الفيسبوك ولتعليقاتكم المجلة الحرة.com وأنا بلاقيكم الأسبوع المقبل بنفس الموعد.